Man, what a year for music, charting the top three spots on Billboard 100, starting with number three, The Cascades Rhythm of Rain, number two, Skeeter Davis, The End of the World, and at number one, The Beach Boys with Surfing USA. The year is 1963, and this Ford Falcon could be had at your local Ford dealership. But before getting into all of it, I'm Jay. Welcome to What It's Like, the automotive channel that shows these cars like you've never seen them before. We dive in deep on history, specs, design. If that sounds like a channel that would interest you, something that you will totally dig, subscribe and hit the bell icon next to it to never miss a video. 1963 Ford model lineup. These aren't in any particular order. Falcon, Fairlane, Galaxy, Thunderbird, Ranchero, Wagons. Ford had half ton all the way up to the big commercial as far as trucks go. Ford would offer the Falcon from 1959 for the 1960 model year until 1970 in the North American market in three generations, unless you count the 1970 and a half intermediate Falcon as its own generation. 1963 falls in the first generation, which was produced from 1960, 61, 62, 63. Ford Falcon was a unit body where the body and frame are one unit. 1963 Ford Falcon could be had as a two-door sedan, four-door sedan, two-door hardtop, two-door wagon, two-door sedan delivery, four-door wagon, two-door ranchero, and two-door convertible. Offered in three trims, just Falcon. Falcon Futura, which would take the place of their deluxe model, and Sprint, which would be introduced halfway through the model year. Let's talk specs. 181.1 inches long, 70.6 inches wide. It rides a wheelbase of 109.5 inches. It weighs 2,654 pounds. Price... $2,469, which is equivalent to you spending $24,885.02 in the year 2024. Total 1963 Ford production was 1,525,404 units, of which total Falcon was 133,523, and of that number, Ford Falcon Futura Two-door convertible is 18,942 units. Moving on to engine. Three engines were on offer. Starting off in the literal proverbial basement, 144.3 cubic inch displacement, in line six with overhead valve, 2.4 liters. It's good for 85 horsepower, 4,200 RPM, 138 pound feet, or 187 newton meters, around 2,400 RPM, with a bore of 3.5 inches and a stroke of 2.5 inches. Compression is 8.7 to 1, features seven main bearings when backed with a three-speed manual transmission. And these are all theoretical numbers. They're just a jumping off point. Mileage may vary, zero to 60, 17 seconds. Theoretical top speed of 85 miles per hour while achieving an average 17.8 miles to the gallon. Moving on to the middle option, 170 cubic inch displacement overhead valve, inline six, 2.8 liters. It's good for 101 horsepower, 4,400 RPM, 156 pound feet, or 212 Newton meters at 2,400 RPM with a bore of 3.5 inches and a stroke of 2.9 inches. Compression is the same at 8.7 to one. Seven main bearings when backed with a three-speed manual transmission. Zero to 60, 13.8 seconds with a theoretical top speed of 90 miles an hour while achieving an average 16.4 Miles to the gallon. Moving on to the biggest and baddest engine available, 260 cubic inch displacement overhead valve Challenger V8, 4.3 liters. It's good for 164 horsepower, 4,400 RPM, 258 pound feet, or 350 Newton meters at 2,400 RPM. With a bore of 3.8 inches and a stroke of 2.9 inches, compression is 8.7 to 1. Five main bearings when backed with a three speed manual transmission, zero to 60, 9.2 seconds. Theoretical top speed, 100 miles per hour while achieving an average fuel economy rating of 13.6 miles to the gallon. Ford, America's liveliest, most carefree car. 44 wonderful new 1963 models at your Ford dealers now.
If you're in the market for a 1963 Ford Falcon Futura, this one is currently for sale at Classic Auto Mall. It has a few upgrades worth mentioning. It has a 289 V8 with green dot C4 behind it, 8 inch, 355 rear end with track lock. As just mentioned previous, this one is currently for sale at Classic Auto Mall. They also have a thousand cars besides this one for sale when recording this episode. Anybody can peruse their inventory, whether that be online or in person. For directions, hours of operation, and to see more pictures of this very car, be sure to click the link below after this show. Let's talk styling. Look at how these headlights... I don't think the term is French for these, but they are recessed. Those headlights are. Also, look at this grill. This is just black to separate different colors, different bars. Turn signal indicators are down here. Just look at how this bumper is designed. This one has Ford in block style lettering on the front. It also has a fake hood scoop. But as far as lines on the hood, that's it. Just the hood scoop lines. Everything else is pretty smooth, except for where the gun sights are. Or they're just more or less like Ford. It's Ford's uh, logo, Ford Crest. And then it's channeled going back towards the windshield the windshield is curved single piece this one has an external cowl as well as windshield wipers that go the same way stainless around the windshield the mirror is mounted on the door this one is a convertible so it does not have drip rails just look how this has this pressed in look 289 badge there the fenders are flared this car is sitting on 14 inch wheels let's look at all of the different lines going on in the sheet metal this car does not have rocker molding doesn't have anything going on it's just flush falcon badge there at the rear just take a look at this rear design the lights sit recessed and they look like thrusters also notice the backup lights are those little tiny lights in the center of the brake light bumper design Futura, nice and proud there. This is the gas cap. So that's where you would put gas. The trunk lid is same as the front, very smooth. Doesn't have any lines in it. The window is a vinyl window. Just look at these door panels. I never saw one with bright, bright door panels. Armrest as well as door handle to pull the door shut. Door lock. Window crank for the big window. It operates like this. And just notice it's all trimmed out, framed out, I should say. This is the door handle to get it out. Vent windows operate like that. Coming down inside the pedal box down here. Hand brake, brake pedal, gas pedal, high beam switch down here underneath this floor mat somewhere. Keys are in here, so I'll show you what the key looks like. This is what the key looks like. 
standard Ford key. Just take a look at this interior. Here is what over the hood looks like. Here's what first person over the hood would look like. On to the button switches and knobs starting on the left and moving right. Power top, gasoline gauge, headlights, windshield wiper, speedometer with odometer at the bottom. Aftermarket tack, coolant temperature, choke, defrost, pull for temperature, pull for heater, lighter, ashtray, aftermarket radio, aftermarket gauges, which are coolant temperature, amp meter, and oil pressure, because amp meter and oil pressure were both idiot lights. Up above, there are sun visors, and they're a bit on the slender side. I mean, like, look at how small these sun visors are. There is a cutout for the rear view mirror, but the rear view mirror is a bit larger than the cutout is. This one has a daytime, nighttime rear view mirror, which nice feature. Sun visor over here for the passenger. On to the glove box test. Here is our test subject. Here is my hand for reference. Here is the glove box in question. Yeah, it, it won't shut. So it does not fit in the glove box. But let's take a minute and look around this dash real quick. I love the fact that this trim matches up with the trim on the door. It gives it a more um, finished look. Also how the top of the dash meets up with this. This dash pad is really nice. Plushy. These seats are really, really nice and plushy. They're very, very nice. Very nice bench seat in this car. Getting in the rear, slide the seat forward like this. Just look at how much space you have to get back there. That is what the front looks like from the back. Let's take a quick gander at the pillar to glass ratio. It's pretty cozy in this car. This is what visibility looks like out the back. From the back seat, behind the back seat, there's plenty of storage when the convertible top is in use. Because this is a convertible, there aren't any coat hooks, but you could hang anything that you would want to off of this mechanism. You just have to remember it's hung to the mechanism before putting the top down. This does not have a dome light. It does have an armrest as well as ashtray and the windows do go up and down back here and they operate like this coming to the under the hood section hood release is right here and that releases it then you just pick it straight up There it is, 289. This one has a dress up kit on it. Distributor right there in the front, coil. This one has the original windshield washer bag as well as an aftermarket tank. Just look at how small this radiator is 12 volt battery. This one has a dual master cylinder back there, but non-power assisted. There's an alternator down inside here. I don't see a power steering pump. The horns are mounted clear down inside there. Almost on the bottom. It's mounted to the bottom brace. On the positive side, affordable, good performance with V8. Great alternative if you're in the Mustangs are overrated camp. Nice interior, plushy seats, parts in great supply, both body parts and engine parts. Club support. These are said to be really good on the road against it. They are rust prone. They are unit body. So just know that water likes to collect just about everywhere and they just rot from the inside out. This car doesn't have that problem. This car's a really clean example. 
and these tend to get overlooked or overshadowed by the Mustang. All right, now it's time for Would You Rather two scenarios today. In the first scenario, would you rather have a 1963 Corvair Monza Spider, that's the turbo model, or a 1963 Ford Falcon Futura, or 1963 Dodge Dart GT? I'm gonna leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free, pause the video. Moving on to the second scenario, 1963 Studebaker Lark or 1963 Ford Falcon Futura or 1963 Pontiac Tempest. I'm going to leave this here for another minute. If you need more time, feel free to pause the video. Now it's time for Name That Tune. First person to get both the name of the band and the song title correctly in the comment section will have their comment pinned to the top of it. Thank you all so much for coming out and watching this. If you'd like to get in touch with me, shoot me a comment in the comment section below. I read and answer all comments posted. I don't say that for self-worth. I say that because if you write a comment, I will definitely read it and get back to you. This is a car community, so much more than a car channel. If you'd like to send me something more intimate, drop me a line through email. The link will be in the description. Just know I appreciate all the information that you guys share. I love the stories. I love the critiques. Until next time, toodaloo! So true, funny how it seems, always in time, but never in line for dreams.